Toxicity in video games. Everyone at some time or another has experienced it. Maybe at one point you even participated in some of the more forbidden techniques. It happens in virtually every video game, but which game is the most toxic? In order to find the answer, I played at least 10 matches from 8 of the most popular video game franchises, and during each game, I kept track of 4 main categories. First was the AFK Andes. These are people that start a game with no intention of ever finishing it. Then we have the Hall Monitors. These are people that sabotage the game in any capacity, because if they're not having any fun, then no one can. Next is BME, or what I like to call Big Meanie. This is reserved for those that are simply being big meanies for no reason at all. And lastly, we take a look at a game's SPG, which is a measuring tool used to calculate the amount of slurs per game. So with those four parameters in mind, I went on my journey to see which game truly has the worst fanbase. I began with a game that doesn't quite fit the mold of having a toxic fanbase. Osu is known to sort of be the gold standard when it comes to player interaction, but I still wanted to put that theory to the test. And throughout the experiment, it proved exactly that. After each game, there was nothing but nice things said between each other. As a matter of fact, it was the only game that people complimented each other in. It was overall a pleasant experience, but that all changed when I started the next games on the list. Riot Games, a company that managed to create not one, but two absolute cesspools of communities. Their newest game, Valorant, is widely known for its blatant sexism, where a lot of the player base would commit what's called a pro-gamer move by dodging matches as soon as they hear the sound of a woman, which is actually kind of Sad. So with that in mind, I had some extremely low expectations for the next two games, and it's safe to say that I wasn't let down. In both Valorant and League of Legends, as soon as my team started losing, the insults flooded in. <sighs> GG's. You guys are terrible. Viper. Yeah. You guys suck. Uninstall, holy. I especially noticed this in League of Legends, where even after encountering the slightest inconvenience, my teammates would leave immediately. And much of this has to do with the fact that once you join these games, you're pretty much locked in for a solid 45 minutes. These long, drawn out matches were even starting to take a toll out on me. I swear, this game makes you want to bully people. Give me like a few more deaths or teammates a few more deaths and I might become a statistic, honestly. Over the course of 10 games, I had a grand total of 4 different people leave the matches, and almost every one of these games had someone throwing a fit. So taking these factors into account slots both these games at the top of the rankings for now. We move next to Rainbow Six Siege, where uh oh we have our first slur on the board. Somehow Siege managed to up the ante when it came to anything toxic, and it's pretty interesting too, because most of the games were pretty tame. There were just a few bad apples that would do things like team kill or insult, and this behavior would bring Siege all the way up to second place in the standings. As I continued on with the experiment, I'd slowly begin to notice that each game has a specific niche when it comes to their own toxic traits. Siege would have team killers, Rocket League would have chat spammers, and League of Legends players would have a lack of deodorant. When I played CSGO for example, everyone there seemed pretty unhinged compared to the other games. And this problem stems largely on the idea that it has zero moderation, which led people to say and do some pretty horrific shit. Putting aside the obvious trolls, there were also a bunch of quitters during the matches, and these contributions allowed CSGO to surpass Rainbow Six Siege for second place in the leaderboard. For the final franchise in the experiment, I went with a game that I'm sure everyone was expecting, Call of Duty, a company that year after year finds itself at the top of the charts in terms of popularity. And since they release a new game every year, I had a wide selection to choose from. But considering most of the games are a straight copy and paste of each other, I went with Modern Warfare since it was the newest one I had. While going through the game's tests, I encountered so many players that said some of the most absurd, outrageous, and just downright dirtiest words known to man. I don't know, they kept mentioning roosters and masturbators, so I looked those words up and all I saw were a bunch of dick. Now for anyone who's played this game themselves, they'd know this is no surprise. And the key reason behind this mass toxicity is the in-game voice chat feature. Having this ability to freely talk to both teams results in most lobbies sounding a lot like this. Oh, it's too easy. You guys are fucking dog shit. Bitch. You died, dog shit. 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 You died, dog shit
Look at my KD compared to yours. Wow, a game that's three years old. Look at my KD. Bro, you're wow, fucking, you're about wow, to go mega in the next round. When comparing Call of Duty statistics to the rest of the games, they don't even come close. Modern Warfare easily takes the top spot, doubling the score of the next highest game. So there you have it. We can finally declare that Call of Duty officially has the worst fan base in the competitive genre. And the main reason behind me going through this experiment wasn't just to highlight the toxic moments in video games. I also wanted to demonstrate that none of this really matters. I know it goes against Ninja's 10 commandments, but at its core, it still is just a game. And yeah, seeing Goku absolutely cranking 90s while simultaneously gritting on your dead corpse can be a little frustrating, but that doesn't mean you can threaten the dude's V-Bucks. I mean, do what you want with his family, but I draw the line at V-Bucks. I'm not saying we should ban trash talk either, because some of my favorite moments actually come from the engagement between the players, but there's this fine line that a lot of people teeter between trash talk and hate speech. After all, video games should be a safe place for everyone to have fun. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.